Hello guys, I hope you're well. We're back on the channel today. Yes, it's me, Jamie, and it has been a long time since the last video. I hope you're still with me. The last video I did was on the 18th of December 2018. A combination of a ridiculous work schedule and a few personal problems has kept me from doing any form of content over the last year or so. But I'm going to try and come back with a few bits here and there over the next few months. I hope you like this um, sort of video uh, and content. Give it a like on the video if you do. But let's get into it then. So we're, today we're going to be looking at the FM. What if a billionaire put, uh, obviously, a billion pounds into a certain league? Now, we're going to be looking at Portugal for this one. Now, Benfica have pretty much run away with it in recent times, bar Porto in 2017, 2018. Benfica are 37 times winners of the Liga Nos, or the Primera Liga. Uh, they're top of the tree. And we're going to see whether... Investing this money into the Portuguese, Portuguese league structure will change that. Whether Porto will, will buy well and, and reassert their dominance or whether we'll get some new teams coming in like uh, Sporting, for example. They were a really good team back in the day. Gil Vicente, Maritimo, Boa Vista, Braga. You know, we could get anything going on here. So let's have a look down the past winners. And we can see here it's been absolutely dominated by Benfica and Porto. The last time a team outside of that group was back in 2001-2002 when Sporting lifted the title. So we can see here that the bottom two will go down to the next league. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over, add a million pounds to every team in the first league here. So let's go into Desportivo das Aves. Now I apologise for my pronunciation. Uh, it's, it's not very good at all. Uh, I do apologise. So we're going to go in. We're going to add a million pounds here. I think I've done too many. No, I haven't. So add an extra one in there that's the million and then we're going to add five million pounds to the wage budget which will give them the maximum value and hopefully that will that will see them bring in players that you wouldn't necessarily associate the smaller teams in the portuguese league to bring in whether it throws about a change at the top of the portuguese league structure uh, how it has an effect on Portuguese football as a whole and whether it will climb from the current reputation of seven in the competition reputation. So join me in a minute when we're going to skip a year into the future and see what's happened. A few moments later. One year into the future then and straight away we can see that Benfica have maintained their grasp at the top tier of Portuguese football and they have come home with an eight point supremacy over Porto with Sporting a further 10 points back in third. Desportivo de Saves and Belenenses. Ridiculous pronunciation, but you get what I mean. Both relegated down to the next division. We can see that Zé Luis for Porto was the top goal scorer. Top assist was Gustavo for Famalicao, I think it is. Gustavo Asuncao. Uh, the... Liga Nos has gone up from number 7 to 6 in competition reputation. And you get the idea. So now let's go and have a look at who won the player of the season. And we can see that Bruno Fernandes linked strongly with Manchester United. Picked up the award again for Sporting uh, two years in a row. Nicely done that. Quickest goal of the year was Zé Luis. 13 seconds against Belenenses and the manager of the year went to Bruno Lage or Lage, Lage of Benfica who lifted the trophy so let's have a look at the transfers then shall we and we can see from a fee perspective there's been some big movements particularly Federico Chiesa, who moved from Fiorentina to Sporting for £94 million. That was followed by Lorenzo Pellegrini from Roma to Porto for £91 million. Jose Jimenez from Atletico de Madrid to Benfica for £89 million. But it did see Sporting's main man, Bruno Fernandes, go in the opposite direction to Chelsea for £86 million, which would have helped fund uh, the, the purchase of Federico Chiesa, although they have got a billion pounds, so it shouldn't really matter. There is Chiesa for everyone to have a little look at. We've also got Pellegrini, 24-year-old 
good player, very good player indeed. And there's loads of other ones, Kaglas, Soyunku, uh, Jairo, Riederwald, moved to Tondela for 22.5, potentially up to 34 million. Uh, Isaac Suse to Santa Clara from Watford. Uh, Ruben Diaz from Benfica to Tottenham for £75 million. So there are players moving in different directions, which is a good start to this. Uh, let's, um, let's come back in a year's time and see what happens there. Well, another year on, another victory for Benfica, this time by nine points. However, Portimonens have crept up the table into second, which is really good for them. Uh, Porto in third, Portimonense managed to win uh, second place via the amount of wins, uh, two more than Porto. Uh, Sporting back in fourth, a further 14 points behind with Vitore de Guimarães on 56 and Braga in sixth on 53. Dan this time with Gil Vicente and Mori Rents. Uh, let's have a look at Portimonense. So they were 10th in the first season, so they... They have really, they've made 30 points up, I think. 31 points between seasons, which is brilliant. Let's have a little look at the transfers then, shall we? Because they must have bought quite, oh, look at that. Mason Mount, 102 million from Chelsea to Portimonense. Bruno Fernandes obviously had gone to Chelsea, as we see. Hussam Ouar from Lyon to Sporting. But that's, that's some, Memphis Depay into Porto. Danilo Pereira to Man United from Porto. Let's have a little look at Mason Mount then, shall we? £102 million and you get this player worth 58 So not really a great buy in that sense in terms of pure finance. But he's a young English, really, really good midfielder. So he's going to have plenty of fun ripping up his Portuguese leaves for Portimonense. And it's no wonder they have improved. Let's have a quick look at the team then. Might as well while we're here. So they've also brought in... Nuno Espirito Santo as their manager as well from Wolves. So that, that is another, they seem to be investing very wisely. Uh, they've got some really nice players here. Gabriel Barbosa, 27 million. That's another one that's been bought in. They've got, who else have they got? Mason Mount, obviously. Ismail Assar. Some really good players. Theo Hernandez, Josh De Silva, Thomas Estevez. A team which are really purchasing well and moving up nicely in the league. Now, I know what you want to see next. You want to see who won the player of the year this time round. So last year, it was Bruno Fernandes. And this year, it is Shoya Nakajima for Porto. Let's have a little look at him, shall we? So Nakajima into his third season at Porto now. And he's picked up with a really good output there. 7.41 average rate and 7.39 through all competitions. Seven assists and six goals. Three man of the matches in 18 appearances. Seven sub appearances really good output there for the japanese midfielder and aside from benfica dominating again portimonense have made massive ground which is really good to see and let's have a quick look at the portuguese league as a whole and they're still at six they're still sixth in the competition reputation which is what you'd expect gabriel barbosa top goal scorer with 18 goals fired them into second place Shalov in second with 17 and Diogo Jota on 14 in third. Shalov with 11 players of the match. Mile Svila and Farines, 11 clean sheets. Join us in a moment when we'll be back with another season advanced and see what has happened there. A few moments later. Well, we're into our third season and we can see already that the Liga Nos has stayed at the sixth position in reputation. Now, we have noticed something. Benfica have lost their grip at the top tier and Porto have picked up the title this time around in this third season. Sporting move up to second with 73 points, 15 points behind the winners. Benfica dropped to third with 69, which is a really poor uh, points total for them. Braga, Portimonense and Maritimo make up the Champions League, Europa League and playoff parts. Chavez and Tondela both relegated down to the next division uh, let's have a little look then so Niang with 16 goals Federico Chiesa 15 goals really good return that Luka Jovic 14 goals Memphis Depay top rated player 7.64 average rating Dantas with 12 assists topping that one for Vittoria de Grimaray 
And players of the match, Memphis Depay, Yota and Ramos all tie ahead on six. Clean sheets, Ordero for Porto, which kind of does make sense. And yeah, let's have a look then at who won the player of the year. Fedor Shalov, who was so good last year as well. Uh, he looks to have now gone to Arsenal though, which uh, we're, we're going on to next. So Shalov won the player of the year. Manager of the year. Bruno Lage again for Benfica. Now, I don't get how he could win manager of the year when his team have, haven't won the title and they've dropped down to third. I'm not too sure how that works. Uh, transfers. So, we've got the transfers. So, Luka Jovic has come into Porto for £118 million, which is massive by anyone's standards from Real Madrid. Matteo Gunduzi from Arsenal to... Porti Manence for £114 million. Pounds. That is a lot of money. Is it invested wisely? Let me know in the comment section down below. Federico Chiesa, though, out the other door to Chelsea for £106 million. So that is a £12 million pound profit on the £94 million pounds they bought him for. Hussein Uar after Liverpool, £99 million. There's There's a lot of business going on at really good prices. Let's have a look at this Porto team then, given that they won the league and they played really well throughout it. So what have they got? Let's get let's get this um let's get the Friday night FM squad view going so we can see what's been going on here. So we've got Luke Jovic with 21 goals in 38 games, nine assists, a brilliant, brilliant return that really for your money. Let's have a quick look at him while we're here. Um yeah. Top notch, top notch striker, which is what you want. Suso, really good, 10 assists. Nakajima, 11 assists, 11 goals. Suso, 12 goals. Uh, some really good defenders there. Lucas Hernandez, Edison Alvarez, Jorge, um, Alessandro Florenzi, all putting his fair share in. And Emil Ordero in goal between the sticks, who was brought in from Sampdoria. And he's doing well for Porto. So, Join us again in a moment when we'll be back for the fourth season. Welcome back to season four then. And we can see the Liga Nost still is in sixth position. And Porto have retained their recent championship win with another follow-up victory. Eight points superiority over Sporting. Vittoria de Gumare up in third with 68 points. Benfica in fourth with 67. Boa Vista in 59. And Portimonense with 57. Down with Academico de Vesu and Lieksez at 14. Apologies once again for the pronunciation. Kind of what you'd expect really. Although Benfica are underachieving. I wonder if their manager has got manager of the year again. Do you know what? Let's just jump straight into that shall we and just have a look while we're here. Uh, manager of the year. Marcelo Gallardo. Well that is overdue. Another good campaign for him. 82% win ratio. Uh, 29 goals conceded. Very, very good indeed. Player of the year went to Luka Jovic. Wrestled it back from Benfica. Luka Jovic with 14 goals and 25 appearances. Really good output that. So then, let's have a look at the stats. So Yota was top goal scorer on 17. Head of Ramos and Obafemi's. Michael Obafemi, never heard of him. That is amazing. Bought in from Sunderland. Wow, interesting. Now, Diogo Yota also picked up the average rating top top charter with 7.65 and the man of the match with 12. Ordero again topping the clean sheets with 13 and Jimenez picking up 11 yellow cards. Let's have a look then, shall we, at the transfers. Now, in the next one, when we're going to go on to season five, I'm going to have a look at the European uh, successes and stuff as well. So we can see that Chaser and that are still top, which we've already addressed. Uh, Azizu Dar. Dominguez comes in from Borussia Dortmund, as does Fabio Silva from Rio Ave. Deut Apamenicano from Leipzig to Sporting for 73. Sporting seems to be spending quite a bit of money. Now, Anthony from Atletico de Madrid to Braga. Mano Solomon from Shakhtar to Porto. And Thiago Dantas to Guimaraes out to West Ham. So that's going in the opposite direction. There's a lot of business going on. Let's have a look at Porto. We've had a look at... Sorry, let's have a look at Sporting. 
We've already had a look at Porto, but they seem to have spent quite a bit of money this time. So, Mateus Enrique with a good amount of assists there. Uh, Martin Terrier with 16 goals. Luis Sampaio, 15 goals. They don't seem to, to score that much, though, do they? In comparison to the amount of games played. I think that's an issue for them transferring it into winning titles is the fact that they're struggling to score at the top end of the pitch. So then join me in a minute. We look at season five, the final one in this episode. We'll see what's been going on, who's won the league and how how that's impacted in Europe as well. Season five of five then. And it's Porto again who have won the league. Let's have a look at last year's table then. So Porto... Five point advantage over Sporting and Benfica. Really good effort that. Porto winning again. Esteril Pryor and Firenze both relegated. Porto Monense have dropped out of the playoff type areas and European qualifications for the first time, I believe. Uh, Benfica, Braga, and Grimaray all thereabouts once again. Good campaign yet again for Porto. Now, let's have a look at the player stats. Well, as you seem to have rolled over slightly, um, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get the player stats and stuff from last season without going too in-depth. So we won't we won't go into it this time because we're going to look at Europe and stuff as well. So the Liga Nos has gone from sixth position up to fifth, which is another nice climb. They were in seventh when we started. Awards. Let's have a look at the manager award, first of all. Manager of the year. And that goes to Marcelo Gallardo again as he guided Porto to yet another victory at the top of Liga Nos, which is to be expected, really. And the player of the year has gone to Diogo Jota, who had another stellar campaign for Guimaraes. Uh, he's done really well. Since coming in from Wolves, he scored 50 goals in 121 games. That's a fantastic output for a player that probably would be primarily used on the attacking mid-left position. But he scored an absolute abundance of goals uh, and he's been a great purchase for them, really. He's, he's banged them in. So another, another good good season for him, which is brilliant. Transfers. And let's have a look at the transfers. So last year, uh, we missed a lot of these. So uh, Alexander Isaac coming from Tottenham. Brian Cristante went to Man United. Money seems to be dropping down a little bit in prices paid and fees paid. Uh, Bergwin from Grimaray to Milan. A lot of them seem to be going in the opposite direction as well. Uh, Yari Vasharan from Watford. Good purchase that. It turns out to be a really good player as seasons progress. So that's a good buy for them. In terms of future, Thomas Estevez has moved from Portimonense to Braga. Guendouzi has moved from Porto Menence to Real Madrid. And I'm sure they paid £91 million for him, so they must have lost a 30-odd bloody... They paid £114 million. They've sold him for 52 It's a £62 million loss. It's incredible. But then again, I suppose if you are a billionaire, it doesn't really matter, does it? So yeah, that's those. There's a lot of players in there to gloss through. Uh, Yannick Carrasco has moved to Inter from Porto. Uh, Dilrosson has moved to Watford from Maritimo. Alfonso Souza has moved from Porto to Norwich. And these are just the ones that have happened so far this season. Now let's have a look at the Champions League first of all. And we'll have a look at uh, past winners. And we can see that they haven't broken into winning the Champions League, which is unfortunate. Let's have a look at the Europa League. Hopefully we can see they have managed to pick up a win and they haven't. They haven't made any impact in Europe so far, which is disappointing because Benfica and Porto have really good teams as it is anyway. I'd have expected them to to at least finish possibly runners-up in one of the tournaments. So that's that will be interesting to see in the next episode as we do seasons 5 to 10. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode, guys. Remember to leave a big fat thumbs up on the video down below if you have. Drop a comment in the comment section if you would like to see a league of your choice done in the future. If you'd like to see more of this sort of stuff, do let me know as well. If you've got any comments and players you'd like to look at, 
then let me know as well. But thank you for joining me today, guys. I really appreciate your time to watch my channel. Uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care.